Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk a little bit about Linux and open source news in November 2022. First, I want to visit the Linux Mint blog, but we also have news about Fedora, Ubuntu, Debian, Linux Lite, Pop OS, and Sorin, so stay tuned. Well, here we have the Linux Mint blog in October 2022, released on November the 1st. And there are some updates for the Cinnamon desktop or for Linux Mint in general. First, we have less password prompts. That means that you don't have to type in your password in certain situations. For example, removing a flat pack will no longer require a password. That's okay. As you know, if you start Synaptic Package Manager, you always will be asked for your password because if you use Synaptic, you will install a program. Now, PKExec is asked to remember your password and so you don't have to enter it every single time if you perform multiple operations. The Update Manager now has a Flatpak support. That means that you can update your Flatpaks within your Update Manager. This was not possible before. You had to update Flatpak, for example, via the terminal. And now it's much easier for the user to update Flatpaks. That's a good thing. We also have some visual changes. That means selected files used to highlight not only the name, but also the icon. And the Linux Mint team doesn't like that very much. And what's new now is that you only highlight the name and no more the icon. I think this is a matter of taste. They say this gives the file manager a much cleaner look. Yes, uh, that's right, but I don't mind if they highlight the icons too or not. <laughs> they also included a shortcut for display settings in the desktop's context menu. So I don't think this is really necessary because in most cases you have to deal with these settings one time during installation. It's different if you use a virtual machines, maybe then you know that you have to change the resolution, but this is not for the average user. Most users don't use virtual machines. Let's go to Fedora News. Maybe you wait for Fedora 37, yes, and it's going very late. Now they are targeting a release day of 15th of November. And this is because they are waiting for a bug fix for OpenSSL and they don't want to release the new Fedora without these bug fixes. So it's not in the hand of the Fedora team, it's in the hand of OpenSSL. The Fedora release cycle is different to Debian. Debian says, okay, it's ready when it's ready. They have no um, fixed release date. And this is different to Fedora or Ubuntu. Fedora users uh, know long before the release date when to expect a new Fedora. They are disappointed if this state is no longer valid. So in this case, the Fedora team have to balance time and quality. The problem is they have to decide if the bug within SSL is so important that they have to delay the release. In other words, is the release date more important than the quality? Maybe the bug is a minor bug and so at the end, it was not worth to delay the release. But who knows? They want to minimize the risk. And this is the same as with Debian. In October, we saw the release of all the Ubuntu flavors 22.10. And there was a big surprise because now we have an official version of Ubuntu Unity again. By the way, check my video about Ubuntu 22.10 with GNOME, the flagship. And if you don't know, if you are interested in Ubuntu 22.04, I wrote a book for beginners about 
Ubuntu 22.04. Now back to Unity. There was always a community who wanted to bring back Unity in one way or another. And so there were always respins available, but they were not official. This was possible because it's open source and you can do whatever you like. And if you want to continue with Unity, that's possible. But now the difference is that's an official Ubuntu release. And I think this is the right time to do this, because now we have short time support releases until 24.4. And then we get the first LTS version of Unity again. And this will be a great moment for all Unity fans. I'm very curious how many people appreciate the decision that Unity is still alive. Time will tell. Linux Lite 6.2 is out and many people think Linux Lite is the better Subuntu. It's shipped with the XFCE desktop and based on Ubuntu, but there are many nice goodies included and as the name implies, it's very light and you can use it on older and weaker computers. That's very nice. You can see here on the homepage on the website that you can purchase Linux Lite, but you also get it for free if you want. Give what you can in US dollars or in Euro. Here, zero, 10, 20, 30 or custom, you can pay what you want, or if you don't want to pay anything, you get it free. I think this is good because we should support the distribution we use, and this is a good way. And if someone cannot support it financially, this is also okay. Linux Lite is always based on Ubuntu LTS, so we have no 22.10 here in Linux Lite, but for most users LTS is the better way, I think. We see 33 millions of downloads so far. This is quite good. I'm curious how many people really use Linux Lite. Sorin OS 16.2 has landed, also a distribution based on Ubuntu but they have some uh, refinements here. As you know, the desktop environment of the flagship is based on the GNOME desktop. It's for the user. It should be very, very easy to use. If you come from Windows, it should have a similar look. This is the intention of Sorin OS. It's easier to install Windows apps. What does that mean? They say you can just click on the exe file and the Windows application will install. You have to consider that in the background you only have Wine. So it is easier to manage Wine this way. But if an application that is not compatible with Wine, it doesn't matter if you use Sorin or another distribution because Wine is the same. If you're Windows application works fine with Wine, then it's easier to install it in Sorin than in another distribution. That's true. They also included some alternatives to Microsoft Fonts. Well, uh, you can easily install Microsoft Fonts with the TTF Microsoft Fonts installer, but then you have to agree the license agreement. So if you, for example, import a Microsoft Office document, with the Calibri font, this is the default typeface in Microsoft Office, the document here will be loaded with Carlito. And if you use Cambria in Microsoft, then this will be loaded with Caladea. For Arial, you get Arimo. For Times New Roman, you get Tinos. And for Korea New, you get Cousin. And the system substitutes these phones automatically. But as I said, you also can use the Microsoft phones if you like the original phones, for example, Ariel or Times New Roman. As you may know, Pop OS is working on their own desktop environment called Cosmic. Why are they doing this? This is because 
now they have the GNOME desktop with extensions. And the problem with extensions is that if you have a newer GNOME version, some extensions suddenly don't work anymore. And this is a problem because if you build your desktop environment upon extensions, they suddenly stop to work and then the desktop is unusable. This is a very old problem because extensions are not implemented in the GNOME desktop. So if a new GNOME version is released, the developers of the extensions have to update the extensions and this costs time because they are not integrated in the whole system. They have to look what is different in the new GNOME version and then they have to change their extensions to work with the GNOME desktop. And so Pop! OS decided, okay, let's build a desktop environment from scratch. And this is the desktop environment we use within Pop! OS. And as you know, Pop! OS is the operating system they use with their System76 computers. And this is most important for Pop! OS because they want to sell computers shipped with Pop! OS. Every user can use Pop! OS if he likes on his own computer. But the most important thing for System76 is that it works on their own computers. Talking about release dates, there are some news from Debian 2 concerning the freezes. The first freeze for Debian 12 bookworm is getting nearer. It's on the January 12th on 2023. This will be the first milestone for the bookworm release. But this is only one of many freezes and I think we have to expect the final release of Debian 12 mid-July, August, something like that. There are dates for the freezes, but there is no date for the official release of Debian 12. As I said, and this is the big difference to Ubuntu or Fedora. Tell me in the comments what you think about this news and tell me if you like this new format on my channel. Stay safe and bye-bye.